After we check the numbers to determine whether a company is worthy of investing in, we also need to make sure that the company is priced at a fair value or preferably underpriced. For that, we need the following values, the EPS or the earning per share, the book value and the net current asset value. For earnings per share, we need to check the income statement. So here we go. We will use the diluted EPS. For the book value, we take the total assets and subtract the difference between the total liabilities and stockholder equity and the stockholders equity. So you can directly use the stockholders equity, but I want to showcase the method to get the number. For the net current asset value, we go to the balance sheet again and take the total current assets and subtract all liabilities. What we actually need is the, the PE ratio or the price to earnings ratio, the PB ratio or the price to book ratio and the price to net current asset value ratio. For the PE, we will simply divide the current stock price with the EPS and we get the number close to 8. For the book value and the net current asset value, we need to first get the value per share. So I will take the values we got and divide it by the outstanding shares. I'll do the same for the net current asset value. Now that we have the per share values, we simply divide the share price against the book value and the net current asset value to get the PB ratio and the PNCAB ratio. As you can see, the PB ratio is 1.67, while the PNCAB ratio is negative 10.43. So the PE ratio is certainly low compared to the industry PE ratio, which is around 18. We can find it on Google. It is also lower than 15, which we stated to be the rule of thumb in the last video. Book value is higher than 1.5, which we would ideally want to be less, but it is less than 4.9, which is the industry ratio. So there are certainly some positives going for this company. However, with the net current asset value in negative, it means that the company's current assets are not enough to pay off all the liabilities. Which brings me to the point I made in the last video that we want PNCAV less than 1, which is correct. But we also wanted more than zero as we want the current assets higher than the total liabilities for this number to make any sense. Now you can see that the company certainly has a lot of positives going on for it, but also has some negatives with the, the net current asset value being negative. So is the stock underpriced based on this data? Most likely not. In fact, it may be overpriced. However, that doesn't mean that the stock will not do well because the price is determined by the buyers and sellers in the market. And if they deem that the company will bring down its liabilities or increase its earnings in the future, the value of stock in the future would be higher. But as stated earlier, we won't try to value the stock in the future as we will try a simple strategy, which most people can follow so we can minimize the risk. And honestly, these simple strategies tend to work better most of the time. Now, one should also check the other measures like um, current ratio, quick ratio, etc. Current ratio is simply the ratio of current assets to current liabilities. Generally, you would want the number to be higher than 2. Quick ratio is a very similar measure, but you take current assets after removing the inventory and get the ratio with current liabilities. You get the numbers 2.1 and 1.71 respectively for this company. Now, these ratios again are favorable, but an investment in this company would obviously depend on your risk averseness. There are other measures as well to gauge the company's health, but I won't dwell into that in this video as I feel for a basic investor this information should be enough to gauge investments. Let me know if you find the video useful in the comment section. Please do like the video and subscribe to the channel. I'll see you next time with another video. Bye bye.